Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. We're almost done with the set of weekdays, but one of the awesome things that you guys get to experience is the fact that UFD Tech now has channel memberships. It's, it's basically a fusion between Twitch subs and Patreon support where you pay us a certain monthly amount and then you get perks on top of it. Right now, we only have one, which is that you get to do a exclusive live stream with the entire UFD Tech team. So that'd be me, Reese, Rickus, and Tank once a month you get to chat to us. We're open to hear what other perks you guys would want. Unfortunately, there's no way that YouTube allows us to like give it for ad forgiveness where like you don't get ads on the channel. It's not the same as like YouTube Red, unfortunately. But if you guys are interested in supporting what we're doing here with hot news and everything else that's going on at UFD Tech, no obligation, but you can check out the channel memberships at the link in the video description or there should be like a join button down below. And with that money grubbing pitch being said, let's jump into today's hot news. Do you want a computer that's smaller than a console and more powerful? Well, Shuttle might have the right thing for you. They announced a 1.3 liter mini PC for Intel's Coffee Lake chips. You can't fit a graphics card in here, but you don't need one to be better than the console. The Intel UHD 630 should be everything that came out from Xbox or PlayStation. So there you go. Get an 8700 in there since it's an H310 motherboard and you'll be good to go for uh, showing off against all of your, uh, you know, console peasant friends, PC masters. Speaking of console peasants, Best Buy, they're gonna be teaching you how to take photographs. It appears that over 80 Best Buy stores in the US are now opening themselves up to be a camera experience learning thing where you can have a beginner workshop that's free or you could have an intermediate workshop that costs about 50 bucks. They'll offer simple photography lessons and teach you how to do things like back to school photography, Halloween photography or holiday photography, and then, you know, holiday cards, all that kind of stuff. Basically everything that a newbie would need. You guys can go check it out if you're interested. Do you want photography lessons from the people known as Geek Squad? I don't. Speaking of console peasants, Best Buy cameras and all of that good stuff, it appears that Twitter posts will no longer automatically post onto Facebook if you have those two connected. This is all connected because of that, because of Tank, who uses this feature exclusively for actually populating his Facebook page. He doesn't ever post there, it's just all tweets that push on. Yeah, I'm calling him out, it's stupid. Does this affect you? Do you actually use your tweets as interaction on Facebook? I'm curious, Tank does, but again, he's not necessarily all that important because of all the other reasons specified today. Shut up, Tank. Yeah, I'm bringing that one back. That's a retro throwback from when he first started here. It's called a joke. I'm not actually telling him to shut up because he's not even talking. Speaking of features getting canceled, Apple is canceling its affiliate program. So in a newsletter that kind of came out of the blue, they are saying that they are closing down their affiliate program for the App Store starting on October first, meaning that if you were depending on this money for any referrals as far as people downloading or buying apps, then that's gonna be completely removed in a couple months. This bothers me on a personal level, just as somebody who does kind of slightly depend on affiliate revenue for keeping the channel going. A move like this would probably severely hurt us. This also happened to affect Bitwit back in the day when he had his Amazon affiliate removed, then he had to come up with different plans of monetizing. It also happened to Linus. It's not a majority of our income, but it's something that absolutely would sting if it got removed from us. There are sites such as Touch Arcade who rely on the affiliate links and are now having the majority of their income removed from them because of this move by Apple. I'm not sure I can necessarily understand why they're doing it because they haven't really given a great reason behind it. Basically in their newsletter, they said it's to increase methods of app discovery. Like great, but then like you have all of these people referring the apps, how is that like your stuff getting better? They, they posted record quarters, they're worth nearly a trillion dollars, but yet they think that they should remove the affiliate program that they were paying people on for quite some time. First off, let me say that we've never had an App Store affiliate program, so this does not affect us personally, but I also want to establish, like, I know that this could come off across as like, oh, we're digital influencers, we get to work at home, and why? how could we complain about having money? It's not a real job. Well, I mean, this personally affects people. They were relying on this income. A program got canceled. It's the same argument that I've heard when we talk about autonomous cars. There are jobs that are being put on the line because of advancing technology or decisions made by companies that affect jobs. And as a person, I just wanna have empathy for the people who are actually losing that income and knowing from a place where we actually get quite a bit of money from Amazon affiliates, it would be a big deal if this got removed from us. And then from that stance, like on a human level, relating that once you lose a significant source of your revenue stream, that is, that's painful, regardless of who you are or what's happening. I don't think I have anything else to add to this story besides the fact that it sucks that this is happening to people and I'm not sure what Apple's reasoning is behind it and this statement that they gave isn't necessarily enough 
for me to agree with their position. But again, we also live in a world where nothing's guaranteed. So hopefully this doesn't happen to us, but of course that's also one of the things that we try to do is diversify our revenue stream so that we're not dependent on one thing being there in order for us to sustain our business model. If you've played any sort of mobile game on your phone that's been free, you might be familiar with this next story because there are things such as playable ads. They're a demonstration of a game trying to entice you to play it by giving you a little, little clip demo that you can actually interact with. Well, it appears that since that's been around, Facebook has finally decided to actually implement that on their platform. So if you see a game ad, it's no longer gonna be a picture of a game. Well, it might be, it depends on who's gonna actually utilize this. It won't just be that, it'll be something that you can interact with. So if Farmville decides to start sending adverts, you'll be able to play it for the first 15 seconds and then obviously you get addicted because it's basically like heroin. At least it is for my great aunt Sally. How dated am I in that like Farmville is the most popular game that I can recognize on Facebook? I'm sure it's not still that. But like that's all that like my, my older relatives were playing and inviting me to and telling me that they needed these things and that things and not, not a fan. Don't do this Facebook, but I understand why. Getting people to pay, yay. Speaking of social media, wait, can Reddit be considered social media? It's kind of like a social platform. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Reddit has suffered a data breach. So apparently in 2007 and in 2018, they happened to have a hacker intercept some of the employees' SMS codes that were used for two-factor authentication, which led to parts of their website be having data leaks. So according to Reddit, the attacker was able to gain access to a complete backup of user database history from 2005 to 2007. That includes usernames, salted and hashed passwords, email address, and all public posts, as well as private messages. So if any of that concerns you, Reddit has a the set of lists of things that you're supposed to do, which is using a strong, unique password, changing that, and using an app authenticator for two-factor authentication. Do you use Reddit? Are you guys on Reddit? Let me know down in the comments. Does this affect you? Do you think it affects you? I have no idea. And then in a bit of brain news, it appears that doctors had cut out a large portion of a boy's brain and that he's living a normal, healthy life at this point. So because of a tumor that developed in the patient known as UD in the case study, they had to remove parts of his brain, including large portions of his uh, occipital lobe, including the entire right side, and then part of his temporal lobe also on the right side. So overall, they removed about a third of the right hemisphere of his brain. Now, the parts that were removed affect things such as your vision, as well as your ability to process that visual input, as well as things such as recognizing faces. So the doctors hypothesized that one of two things could happen. Was One was that the brain was never gonna be able to recover and that there would be no way around him losing those features, or two, the brain would find a way to rewire itself. Well, it turns out that the latter one is basically what happened. So there are parts of his brain that still can't mend because the entire right part of his occipital lobe is completely missing. So he can't process visual input from the left side. So he has a permanent left blind spot. But the doctor says that he fixes that by looking at the object instead of trying to look at it out of his periphery. So just like it was before his surgery, the doctors are saying that he's still scoring above average on his IQ test, and he's within the normal range of visual perception for a boy his age, and that he performs just fine at recognizing faces, discriminating objects, perceiving global forms, and on reading proficiency tests. Basically everything you would expect from a child with a normal healthy brain. So it's good to hear that our brains aren't just giant piles of mush that if you poke them, they die. That's not how it works, fam. We can actually recover from these things. So. Uh, terrible circumstances that led to a great discovery about how we are not as dumb as we think we are. Speaking of human brains, space. It turns out that Boeing's Starliner ship won't be ready when they think it is and that it has to be delayed until sometime next year. So the Boeing Starliner is being developed to send humans to the ISS via the means of private carriers instead of relying on the space shuttle that NASA was using. The Starliner was originally supposed to take its first flight sometime this month, followed by a crude launch in November, but now they're expecting that has to be delayed until 2019 because of an engine mishap that happened to happen last month. We'll have to see if there's any more delays in this happening, but it appears that Boeing is pushed back and that our trips to Mars for that Palisade that has that nice spa is gonna be delayed by a little bit. Hopefully not too long because I'm really looking forward to my retirement. Speaking of Boeing's failures, Tesla because uh, Boeing and then SpaceX and then SpaceX, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, Tesla. There we go, that's the connection. It's not as bad of a segue as you think. So it appears that the Model 3, which everybody was saying was going to be the doom of Tesla, maybe it still will be, is actually turning a profit finally. So after a Q2 report of their finances, it appears that 
Tesla Model 3 is finally in the black and not losing them any money. It's not a great deal because it's turned slightly positive, but they expect that they're gonna show gross margins on the Model 3 vehicle of 15 to 20% in the third and fourth quarter respectively. Elon Musk said in a conference call on Wednesday that the goal is to be profitable and cash flow positive every quarter going forward. So this means that we could possibly have actual electric cars meeting the masses hopefully sometime soon, especially with the fact that the Model 3 is the best-selling mid-size luxury sedan out there right now. And even though Elon doesn't have his papa status, I'm still very excited for Tesla cars, and I can't wait to get my Model X once we have that YouTube money. Speaking of making money, Sony is launching their Xperia Z2 Premium, which comes with a 4K HDR screen at 5.8 inches and costs a whopping $1,000. Now you would think for a thousand bucks, you would get a decent amount of storage, but unfortunately friends, this thing only comes with 64 gigabytes of storage with an expandable micro SD card slot, but then it has the Snapdragon 845 and it has like really good cameras on the back that Sony's known for. It has a whole bunch of features, but it's another thousand dollar phone that just kind of doesn't really feel like it needs to exist. Good job, Sony. I mean, this is basically a continuation of the 4K phones that they originally pioneered, but don't actually run at 4K unless you're watching 4K content because the battery life trade-off is way too much, so it scales down. It's probably gonna be something like that. So it's not really 4K, it's only 4K if you're actually watching 4K HDR content, but whatever. Speaking of phones that don't need to exist, it appears that not only did Huawei surpass Apple as the number two phone maker in the world, they also sold the most notch smartphones in the world in the first half of 2018. So they sold a total of 25.4 million units compared to Apple's really low, measly 20.7 million units, followed by Oppo, Vivo, and then Xiaomi at the very end of that list. So notch phones aren't that bad. Everybody's buying them. There's like at least 50 million of them out there. And then speaking of things that people use every day that got a little bit of a flip with the notch, now it's actually gonna be external hard drives. It appears Asus has announced their FX series of external hard drives complete with AuraSync lighting. So yes, my friends, not only can you have an AuraSync monitor, graphics card, mouse, keyboard, motherboard, all of that kind of stuff with your RGB RAM, you can now plug in an external hard drive and it's gonna be rgb fied too. Why we need this, nobody knows, but you can bet my, your sweet buddy but that I'm gonna get one. <laughs> Then quickly, Samsung has announced that it has started mass production on the 16 gigabyte chips of its LP ddr 4 x memory for mobile devices using a 10 nanometer process. See, they can do it, Intel, why can't you? And then we have some surprising news coming out of Mind Factory in Germany, which is a German retailer there, that AMD Ryzen has been kicking butt. So they put out a report detailing all of their sales figures for basically the past year from July 2017 to July 2018, and it turns out that AMD and Intel both have about a 50% market share. And in fact, it looks like AMD is ahead by a couple hundred units with all of their retail sales. So it appears that each of the chip makers sold about 8,000 CPUs each, while Intel took the majority share of the profit, coming in at 58%, while AMD chips obviously counted for 42% after that, because 100 minus 50, that's not, you understand. So it's interesting to see this detail come out of a retailer that AMD's resurgence has come very quickly, where of course talking about new samples we're not talking about what people are running in their system because that that would like obviously people are still running sandy bridge so intel may have a bigger market share but they don't necessarily have a bigger overall share of the current sales that are happening one of the interesting things to note from the data is that the ryzen 5 1600 actually sold more than any of the 2000 series chips that amd has with mine factory that is obviously all of this data can't be extrapolated to be applied worldwide so we can't say that amd has 50 percent of the CPU sales across the entire world. However, this probably does mean that AMD's market share has picked up quite a bit with regards to how many people are buying Ryzen versus Coffee Lake. And this is also something that was reported on a few weeks ago on Hot News with that tech power-up survey showing that indeed AMD is being picked up more frequently than the current Intel chips. But I'm actually curious. So let's do a little study of our own. Of the people who bought a CPU in the last year, there's gonna be a poll in the corner. So if you haven't bought a CPU, don't answer this. If you bought a CPU in the last year, did you buy an Intel or did you buy an AMD? So not what you have, but if you bought in the last year, Intel or AMD in the corner right up there. I'm just explaining it one more time. I don't need to know what you have. I need to know what you bought. Let me know up there so we can conduct a test of our own and see what the UFD tech audience is actually rocking. And then if the hype is to be believed, we are getting new NVIDIA GeForce graphics cards announced in about 18 days. And we have more evidence that they exist thanks to a forum user over on Baidu. So this is actually coming from 
video cards we're using as a source because it's in English, Baidu however is not, but you can check out the original thing down in the description. We have a leaked PCB of an upcoming graphics card which actually gives us a lot to look at. It looks slightly similar from that earlier prototype that we talked about previously, including the fact that it still has that NVLink connector up at the top, which could mean that Nvidia is getting rid of SLI completely and instead we'll have something even more fast paced such as NVLink. Whether or not that's gonna be true or if this is just a development board has remained yet to be seen. So based on the size and everything that we see of the, the actual die here, it looks like this will be for the GV104 processor, which would be obviously the GTX 1180 or 2080, whatever we're gonna call it. And then it has the Nvidia logo down by the PCI Express connector, which indicates that this is an Nvidia board and not an AIB partner board. And then based on the display out connectors on the left-hand side, it looks like Nvidia might be just doing away with the DVI ports altogether, which is something that they've already shown that they're doing. And then this could be connected to the story that we talked about in a previous hot news that they've developed the new virtual link connector, which is a type C connector that delivers both visual signal, audio signal, as well as power for VR headsets. So you could expect something like two display ports in HDMI and then a type C known as the visual link port that they might be putting on this. And then interesting, the reason that this seems so much like it's a GTX 1180 or 2080 board is the fact that up top for the power delivery, you'll see that it has an eight pin PCI Express power connector and a six pin power connector as well up there. Obviously the, the power connectors aren't there, but the, the pins and everything there for actually putting it on is right there. This looks like a reference board for designs. So based on the fact that it's a smaller chip design than the previous prototype board, it's a six and an eight pin as opposed to three eight pins. And then we can actually see what type of visual outs we'll get. This actually looks like it would be a legitimate leak of a legitimate board still obviously take this with a huge grain of salt. We obviously don't know anything about performance. We don't actually get to see the die size. We have to make all of that up ourselves, but we have leaked evidence of a PCB for an upcoming chip, which makes us all very excited, I'm sure. And that is going to wrap it up for hot news today, my friends. Let me know what you think of the PCB from Nvidia. Let me know what you think about engaging in ads on Facebook or about that Asus colorful external hard drive. Would you wanna buy one of those? Let's chat about anything and everything down in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget that you can support us by getting, becoming a channel member. If you want, you get a special emo on live streams when I do them. It's my face doing this. So that's always an incentive. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see your smiling faces again in the next hot news, which will be tomorrow. Love you too.